One of the most important payment channels that you're going to be able to offer your customers um, is self-service, um, mainly e-commerce, obviously, uh, given the situation <clears throat> nationally. Uh, making payments online now is um, more popular than it ever was. So more and more users <clears throat> are going online, making payments against accounts using um, platforms and applications they've become very, very familiar with, Amazon, Play, eBay, um, online shopping through um, all the major supermarkets um, across the UK. And those customers are uh, expecting a very similar experience from merchants of all types and all sizes, and yourselves included. So let's have a look at how we can assist in making your customer's journey as frictionless as possible and as seamless as possible without causing too many headaches as, as far as reconciliation is concerned <clears throat> by linking those transactions through to your income management system and presenting them in such a way that your, your customers want to come back and use them over and over again. Um, so importantly, let's think about your income management process and your system for processing payments in a, a initially a, a mediated manner. So we may have a customer on the phone, you know, you're engaging um, uh, at some point in the future, face to face, um, you will use this application to assist and mediate the transaction. So we will go to payments, accounts, uh, you're having a conversation with the customer to locate their account, you know, locating the fund items that they want to pay for. Um, let's find myself, shall we? So there's me. Um, I've got an outstanding balance of £900. I want to pay, you know, the full £900. Very straightforward. The member of staff is talking them through this. I want to pay cash. Uh, press OK. Job done. Transaction finished. Very, very quick, frictionless and easy. Obviously, there is now back office action required as far as banking that cash, reconciling that cash and income, so on and so forth. How can we make this easier for both you, you know, your organization, uh, but also your customers? What we can do is present a simple way for your customers to pay online. So what I'm going to do is just copy this reference number um, and remove myself from the uh, presentation so we can see the application in all its glory. So let's look at um, e-commerce as a base. So we'll just open up a new session. This is a representation of a web page that will be very similar to your payment page for uh, your local authority, for example. Um, and there will be a list of items uh, that you can make payments against. This one's presenting sort of council tax, rent, accounts receivable, penalty charge notices, miscellaneous, but those items can be anything you wish. The framework, uh, style sheets, imaging will all be designed to match your corporate look and feel precisely. So your customers will believe they are still within your environment and paying you directly, gaining uh, th their assurance. So let's make a council tax payment, self-service, uh, a simple journey. So we select council tax. Um, the form that's presented is based on the data required to process the transaction. So the way we've configured this application is for the customer to type in their council tax reference number. When they press continue, the form is dynamically changed based on the fields of information you would like to collect at that point. We've already validated the reference number and know it is correct. So we've done a check digit validation routine on that or you know a mask and or balance lookup. Um, we want to capture the account name, address and postcode as additional information associated with this uh, account as well. So I'll type in my name, address and postcode. Now, you may be asking the question, why was that not <clears throat> displayed on screen as, as part of the process to try and remove the friction. The reason being is this is classed as an unauthenticated transaction, a transaction whereby it has been initiated without prompting the user for um, an account, a name, a password linked to the uh, the environment. So it's not like a, 
a my council or you know my services type area you can present those if you have an authenticated account a session that's been validated and secured but in this instance this is a quick and simple way to present a payment service and display the balance without breaking any rules as far as the data protection act is concerned so there's the form with the outstanding amount the amount field can present in this way if you wish now i could overtype that with, with an amount that i want to pay if i wish or it could be mandated and fixed at 900 pounds or it could be a free text field where the customer types in the full amount they want to pay um, i'm i'm going to pay 800 pounds um, off the account um, and as you can see there's some options down here which we'll cover in another session around paying in installments as well which is great for things like deferred debt or outstanding balances so we've got a number of tools that can assist with that but what, what we'll do is a simple payment to see how quickly this can work I press continue at that point that takes me through to my uh, shopping basket the cart then summarizes what the the payment for goods is for and that can either be a single item or multiple line items if i wanted to pay for two things at the same time there i'll press continue and the forms then integrate to the pay 360 um, secure card portal once presented with the options on the secure card portal the customer will select their preferred mechanism to transact with you and we're adding to this all of the time and you will present the options that are suitable to you as an organization and for your customers so at present i've got the, their pay by using card a traditional method pay by using a wallet that stores the card details for future use using google for sign in security uh, very similar to the experience you have on the likes of play amazon and ebay you can link your payment mechanism to PayPal, and I'm sure we all have used that uh, service in the past, but also one called Visa Checkout. Visa Checkout, importantly, is a, um, once you sign up for the service, a friction-free way of transacting with your organization and meets all of the requirements for strong customer authentication, 3D Secure. Um, so certainly something that's worth looking at, and we can go into that in more detail in another session. So I'm going to pay that £800 now um, by using a traditional card. I mean, we could have chosen any of the other um, checkout choices or transaction choices in the screen before. Um, those options, as I say, will, will grow based on your profile as a merchant and also your customers' needs. We are keeping our eyes heavily on the industry as a whole as to which preferences are um are really taking root given the change in in merchant environments across the world so um let's get back to the payment and we shall continue the transaction so i type in the card number now uh, and expiry date and security code Press continue at that point. Um, the uh, platform will then prompt for any other details it wishes there. And if I want an email address uh, linking to the transaction and also a receipt, I would populate my details within there. So I may as well uh, get that completed. And continue the checkout. Payment confirmation page just details the purchase details of what you're paying for, the total amount, and also the uh, the method of payment details. So in this instance, card details uh, and how I'm going to pay. You check that they are correct, and then make payment. In this instance, we are showing 3D Secure. So 3D Secure is a mechanism of ensuring you are the card holder. And there are variations of this based on the framework that is presented through um, an iframe. So the actual 3D secure mechanism is presented by either Visa, MasterCard, or, or whoever the card issuer is um, through your framework. So we have um, an element of control uh, as to how that's displayed. 
but the look and feel of these pages as 3D Secure is introduced across the industry will be considerably better than they are uh, as we know. So I shall just type in my password for 3D Secure, meeting the requirements for strong customer authentication and continue there. The card is then authorized real time. It goes off to the um, uh, merchant acquiring service to authorize the transaction um, it does any additional checks it needs to for strong customer authentication. So it may need uh, biometrics. It may send uh, either an email or an SMS to ensure the cardholder is the person making the payment. Once that's completed, you then have an option on screen to um, print off a receipt or continue the journey uh, on the website and the payment process or make another payment. That's it, a quick way of transacting online. Um, I'll quickly, before I leave you, go back to the payment application where the member of staff is. Obviously, they haven't transacted now with that individual, but they may get an inquiry in the future as to uh, whether that payment's been made. They are then able to search through pay.net, the transactions, uh, and there is the one we've notified uh, uh, for 800 pounds that has just been made online, uh, capturing all of the detail that was input on those forms. And as we saw in some of the other sessions, you can from here either refund, reprint, look at more information of that transaction once it's completed. Hopefully that was of help and we'll see you again soon.